Hello and welcome back to my network. I'm with Aldo Botano, the CEO of Cleantech Lithium. Aldo, good to see you. Good to see you too. Uh, just to kick things off, company overview and a bit about your capital structure at the moment. Well, the company started in 2017. I'm one of the two co-founders. Uh, from day one, we were seeking to produce uh, uh, the greenest lithium produced. We aim to be the greenest lithium producer of the world uh, with direct lithium extraction and renewable energy. That's my background, renewable energy, three large projects. Uh, we controlled uh, when we listed in almost a year ago in, in the AIM stock market. Uh, we controlled two complete basins in the southern tip of the lithium triangle. That was because back then people were not looking into these basins and we could uh, have control of them. Uh, we raised uh, 4 million pounds pre IPO and then uh, 5.6 at the IPO level. Uh, we've been putting the money on the ground. We're running the second year of simultaneous campaigns in these two flagship projects. When we listed, we have half a million tons, and now we have two million oh. tons between the two projects, and that has helped the stock uh, going up. And 800 of 800,000 of them are indicated and measured. Uh, we we've been working back in 2017 until now with the major DLE directly in extraction companies, and uh, we sign a, and working currently with Sun Resin from China, who has seven projects in the world, and we produce our own without some resin before them, one kilo of battery grade lithium. We have a small unit lab scale pilot plan that we're working on and six months from now we'll have a, a larger um, uh, one ton per month production plan. Okay. So yeah, that we added since then a 700 square kilometer project in, in, in the a little to the west of uh, Salar de Tacama at a lower elevation. These two projects sit at 4,400 meters. That means there's limited flora and fauna that, and uh, there's no indigenous communities on site. Hmm. We've been working with these groups who are 2,000 meters below, two hours below, but we drive through them and we employ them on site. So we've been working with them with a strong ESG uh, group. We have the operations of the company in Copiapó, the nearest mining town. And uh, the other thing, not on purpose, but it has happened because of the quality of the people. We have more men than women operations, uh, hydrogeology, uh, environmental community, all those are run by, by women right now Good. in our company. Okay, so we've touched on a lot there, so I want to dissect a lot of that. Um, but just uh, before we do that, what's the capital structure looking like at the moment? How many shares outstanding? How much it's cash a little bit bank? more than 100 rate? million shares. Yep. 60% uh, uh, is highly tail, uh, held and controlled. Uh, we used to have a volume of 400,000 uh, shares per day. Now the last couple of weeks, it's been 1.5 wow. million shares per day. We went up uh, uh, a month from now, a month and a half from now, from around uh, 50 uh, cents, 50p, yep. uh, up to 94. And now we came down a little bit uh, because of the, of the lithium being the price coming down 7% and all those news. Forbes uh, marked us uh, and make a big announcement of the, one of the five stocks to look this year. We're 100 million more or less US dollar market cap company and uh, and supported by 20 people now uh, fully, fully on, on the company. Mm -hmm. Some of them in Jersey, some of them in the UK and mostly in Chile where the projects are held. Yes. All right. Awards coming from everywhere. So you got Forbes recognizing you. You also was recognized as the best IPO last year as yes. well. Yeah, not Forbes, another company recognizes. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we, we've been increasing our awareness. Thanks for inviting us to this interview. Uh, we have a PR company here in the US, of course, in the UK, in Australia right now. Uh, we're listed here. Last week, we listed on the OTC here. We are listed in Germany. It was still a name listed company. And in our latest announcement, uh, we said that we were really uh, starting uh, studying hard to go to ASX. That's... Well, let's, let's dive into the projects. Yes. Um, and obviously, I know you've released a scope in since your IPO. That there's a lot that's happened, but I just want to go before the IPO. Tell us a bit about how the company was created, who was involved, uh, how have you put these licenses together? What, what was the origin? Yeah, well, I was there in Chile. I'm, I've been the managing director from day one uh, with an Aussie partner who, who lived abroad. And uh, I'm a very well-known mountaineer in Chile. I've, I've been involved in big mountain climbing and I don't know, else, in the Himalayas and elsewhere. And uh, so I, when I saw the projects and I saw the fact that uh, these were so-called back then lower grade lithium projects, and in the beautiful landscape of tall mountains, I said, we have to do better. Uh, the, 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 the price of, co uh, of lithium was anywhere between 8,000 to 9,000 tons. Yep. Now it's 
uh, US dollars per ton now is uh, up to 70 or something, 70,000. And, uh, and I said, we, we have to do better. The lithium is basically extracted out of brine with evaporation ponds, just as much as you get your salt in your table every day. Yeah. And that has a, foot, a big footprint, and at the same time, you're depleting the subsurface aquifer. So we tried with all companies, and we ended up pairing with some resin uh, a few months ago, who have seven uh, projects in the world of direct lithium extraction. Basically, you don't deplete the subsurface aquifer. And I, I was uh, known for, lar for starting doing the engineering and then sold to be built three large uh, renewable energy projects, photovoltaic projects. So the combination of the two, we aim to be the greenest lithium producer of the world. Right. And, uh, and, and I will take pride of, along with my engineering credentials, that we are, we're, we're extracting lithium and with a green approach and leaving the place as it is, as we leave 20, 25 years from now, we'll leave those places. Okay, I do want to go into the processing, but tell me what's in the ground at the moment. Because you... We're drilling in, uh, two simultaneous drilling campaigns. Yep. Uh, we are uh, going to significantly expand the resource after that. Normally, the market reacts not when we have the York resources out, but before when we have the drilling results out. The Laguna Verde should be fairly soon initial drilling results, and then Francisco Basin, where Laguna Verde were drilling two holes, in, in Francisco Basin were drilling three and a half, and, uh, and th those results will come out, and then the York will follow. Uh, we're doing hydrogeological work on site, we're doing environmental work on site, and, uh, and we have uh, two campsites at 4,400 4, meters, uh, very strict, high altitude and driving, and, all, all security in place. But in terms of resources in the ground today, what, what does that look like? Uh, it's around uh, 15 people on each of the two sites. As in, as in um, sorry, the, the actual size of the resource and the grade of the lithium. Okay. And Laguna Verde, when we listed, was half a million. Yep. And now it's up to 1.5. That's from a previous campaign, 800,000 of them indicated. In Francisco Basin, just one well created half a million tons of inferred resource. We aim to increase that as much as I can. I can speak, as a CEO, I cannot speak of the numbers, but our, our brokers, Canaccord and Daniel Fox Davis, they told that we could easily triple that half a million to 1.5, 2 million tons of resource with the percentage of that being indicated and measured, and Laguna Verde from 2 to 3, 3.5 as well. Yeah. They, they, they've been putting out notes, a very respected uh, analyst out, uh, and we're significantly undervalued even though our stock when we listed, we were a $6 million company. Now we're closer to a hundred, but we're still heavily undervalued. The market has always credited us that we put the money on the ground and, and, and invest on the technology, on the people on the, that is doing the work and the drilling, et cetera. Okay, undervalued at the moment. Let's, let's look at that. So what's, what's the economics around this? You released a scoping study not too long ago. Yeah. Maybe you can just run through the post-tax uh, numbers. Yeah, the, the, we, we think that the price of a stock is, uh, is the, the market where you're at, Chile, who is a major, major mining jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. And since the, the vote against a proposed constitution that was moving the country to the left, we have a much more pro-business uh, environment right now. And the government has always been close to us because of our green credentials. Then we have the resource that was, since half a million to two million, we, we made it four times. And the in situ value you divide the, the market cap of a company by the resources that gives you an evaluation and we're still lower than our peers. Yep. Some of them are more advanced. The scoping study is part of the de-risking of the project. Uh, it's Laguna Verde who's ahead. Francisco Basin will come in a few months. And we're already starting with Laguna Verde, the PFS with Worley, okay. who's a global uh, company. But what sort of economics did we see in the scoping study that was already released? Oh, it's $1.6 million, billion dollar company uh, great is that the return. MPV? Yes. Great, and is that great return. Post tax numbers? Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. So 1.6 billion MPV. Yeah. And what was the life of mine? What was the payback? It's 20,000. Uh, I think you have to dig in the in the RNS tool for all the for all the numbers. But the the life of mine is uh, 20 years. Okay. That we even though the price is 70,000 or so, we took a long term price of 23. 500 US dollars. We're very concerned. So the 1.6 billion MPV is, is based on a 23,000 lithium price. 22,500, yeah. And is that on lithium? Is are you are you creating a lithium hydroxide on site, or are you no, creating a lithium a lithium carbonate at carbonate. L LCE yeah. price? Yeah. Okay. But so we're very conservative uh, with everything we put down on the market. 
and the market has as, as awareness has increased. Um, and so just uh, sorry to interrupt, but what's what's the capex to actually build this thing in the scope? Yeah, one one twenty thousand dollar one one uh, twenty thousand per year production plant. Yeah. That's the base case uh, of our resource with a scoping study. It's four hundred million dollars. Four hundred million dollars, US okay. dollars, and Brilliant. you need. We we aim to raise uh, with equity only one hundred, and the other three hundred with debt. In debt, okay. Yeah. And then that project alone will finance the other project, and that's not even counting Yamara, who's we're going to start drilling uh, fairly soon in the next two weeks. Who's uh, the two southern projects combined is double the size of Central Paris. But the project we have now is 700 square kilometers. That's a country in many parts of Europe or, or a big, yeah. big, big nice. section. So yeah. we're going to do that. Okay. So what, 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 what's, what's the time frame here in terms of what work do you need to do? And what's the main priority? Is the main priority working on the existing assets to try and get that into production? Or is it more the exploration and trying to grow these the it's, resources? It's two things. Uh, we're, we're working on the DLE front, the direct lithium extraction. Like I said, six months from now, having placed the, the one ton per month production of, of that and send it to vendors around the planet. Yep. Uh, th we'll have the, the plant right there and we'll, we'll produce this one ton per month in the in the subsequent month. So that's on the manufacturing side on the and the PFS with Worley will actually have more detailed engineering behind that, but at the same time, we're trying to increase the resource. Uh, and but by increasing the resource, we're also producing very high quality wells, who could be turned to production wells in the okay. future, and will allow us to extract the thirty thousand liters to be able to do them all the metallurgical process. And what's the what's the grade of the lithium in the brine at the moment? Is is a, is a, in uh, Laguna Verde? Yep. It's it's a little bit above two hundred the average. We had some, but, yeah. yeah. We've we've collected uh, up to four hundred and eight in one of the samples. It's really hard to keep uh, the fresh water from coming in and diluting the samples there. Yeah. But we are reconditioning the holes, and then this year's wells are much better, well constructed. We and have a, a four hundred and twenty-five is our aim to reach in both in both wells, uh, an eight-inch casing with a slotted uh, two millimeter casing and heavy silica. So we can replicate the geochemistry of, and we seal, we seal already the first meters of fresh water coming down. Okay. So I guess this will get a bit clearer once you've got the new seals in and, and, and you extract some yeah, more. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of news in the next 12 weeks or so. What, what sort of impurities are in the brines with it? Um, what, what sort of other chemicals are there that... Okay. There's a, there's a, a, a magnesium to lithium ratio that anything uh, below one to 10 or one to 15, it's good for direct lithium extraction. We are in one to six in one property, that's Francisco Basin, and one to nine in the case of Laguna Verde. We've sampled with the major DLE producer of the world and stick with sun resin, like I said, and it's, it's always been good. And the one kilo battery grade, you, the requirement to be certified as, as, as lithium uh, high grade for battery grade is 99.5. We achieved 99.9. At .9. okay. that 0.1 had very low impurities. Our calcium is less than the average calcium. We're very fortunate. Direct lithium extraction is a combination of uh, nanofiltering, the resin absorption with an organic resin that you strip away and then you re-inject 100% of the spent brine back in the subsurface aquifer. Then you have reverse osmosis, force evaporation, and you have ionic exchange. Yeah. So at the end of that, you have a 10 to 15,000 parts per million of, of a, an L weight or mother liquor, yep. but you've taken a lot of the impurities out to, okay. to further processing. Well, this direct lithium extraction, it's fairly new technology in the grand scheme of things. Um, you've, got a, you've got a pilot plant up running already. How, how is that working? How scalable is it to, to get this up to the, the larger question. amount? It's new in the, in the sense that a lot of companies are adopting them, and I think we started earlier than them, but it's been around for more than 20 years. There's a salar in Argentina, Liven, yeah. who's in Hombre Muerto, who's been doing this for more than 20 years. They don't have evaporation ponds, uh, the, the sequence of evaporation ponds. But uh, when we started, we, we went with the likes of Lilac and other, and other companies in the world. Yep. But uh, we ended up pairing with San Racin because they have seven places that are already doing direct lease instruction. They're, 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 they did a PFS here in the U.S. with Hanson Resources in Utah. They, they're working on, on building a plant in, in Argentina. And uh, we have, a, like I said, a small scale, large scale pilot plant that we're fine tuning that. By the time, uh, six months from now, we'll have the larger one to produce one ton. Uh, it's all scalable. We can, we can start 
I, I told you the figures of $400 million for a 20,000 ton per year plant. But if we do it for 10,000 tons per, per year plant and then we scale it up, it's half that capex cost. So the OPEX is it's fairly comparable to the to traditional evaporation. It's a little bit 10, 15% more higher than that. And what, what's the time scale in terms of ramping? I think you mentioned earlier yeah. that there is a time scale already in place to sort of ramping up the pilot plant. Yes. How, when can we start seeing larger samples being sent to um, cathode or sort of battery manufacturers, start getting that authentication process started where? Some nine months from now, yeah. six months to, to assemble the pilot plant, the large unit, and then going over to the cycle of producing that, certifying that, and then be able to send it to major household names and Brilliant. car manufacturers and so on. The direct lithium extraction is that not only environmentally, it's a lot better in the sense that a smaller footprint and not depleting the subsurface aquifer, but it, it, with, with the different steps of this, the resin, you collect anywhere between 90 to 95% of the lithium in the brine. And then with the additional process, you ended up with something between 80 and 85. Uh, uh, evaporation ponds get up to 40%, 45%. Yeah. And they need the whole process, batch process of the different the different evaporation ponds, in case you don't have any trouble with rain or anything, it takes uh, more than 300 years, 300 days to, to being done. Yeah. Plus then building them. So it's, it's, so it's a two year process. The direct lithium extraction plant can be, can be built in nine months and we start producing lithium in hours. Good. But that's why you need a big piloting do. You what? need to have a big piloting to be able to do that. What happens to the water, the byproduct, once you've extracted lithium? Does that go back underground? What? Yes, you need to have a good hydrological model yep. in the whole basin that we own. We're the only ones that have that in the lithium space, in the lithium triangle. And, and it goes 100% spent brine without the percentage of lithium. Okay. goes and back. And we need some fresh water for the process that yep. also recycles on the, on the plant. And we, use, we try to use the bare minimum of that. And d does that go back into the same, I guess you could call it, ore body as the, the lithium that you're extracting? Yeah, no. One is the spent brine and yep. the other water, uh, we use fresh water and we, we evaporate some and then the rest we okay. keep recycling it. Because one of the things I've seen, especially when uh, we've looked at um, direct lithium extraction here in the UK, one of the ideas is that you actually flood, push the water back into the geothermal wells once you're done yeah, that's with it. geothermal. In our yeah. case, it's uh, subsurface aquifers that we have, yeah. 80 or 100 meters below. Okay. Uh, again, so there wouldn't we be extract any dilution it and now. we get it 100% back. Okay, brilliant. So, okay. Yeah, there's no change whatsoever. The thing is, you have to have a good hydrological model. So where are you going to re-inject it? So it finally feeds the same subsurface aquifer, but it's not uh, diluting what you're extracting. That's good, that's good. a trick. <laughs> okay, good. That does sound good. And that takes a lot of money and study, by the way, and time. But yeah. we're doing that right now. And um, one of the things I should have asked you with the economics is what, what's the all-in sustaining cost here to actually extract the lithium um, and, and process it? The OPEX? Or the, the all-in sustaining cost. So for you to extract it, process, and then get it to port or to get it to ship. Have you? That's, that's uh, it's around 3,500, anywhere it ranges from 3,500 US dollars to 4,000. Uh, okay, so per ton and the price, you know how it so is. So the margins are pretty good here. Yeah, but we did again. We did everything based on a twenty-two, twenty-two thousand five hundred US dollars. Yeah, long-term price. Okay, so the margins are very good here. <laughs> it um, is. <laughs> okay, and we pay a lot of taxes too. To, to yeah. for, for Chile, and that's very good for the economy as well. Good. Uh, I just wanted you, you touched on earlier that this is going to be one of the cleanest lithium projects in the world. Yeah, if not the cleanest. Uh, you you mentioned renewable sources. Yes. 100% use of renewable sources. We're only within a few kilometers of a substation. Depends on where you connect one to three kilometers in Francisco Basin. And in, in, uh, in Laguna Verde, we're 52 to 100 kilometers, depending on which substation we connect. And that's, in mining terms, that's the next block and the other one is connected to your house. Uh, so that, the infrastructure is in place, paved highways, and some parts have cell phone coverage and others we have uh, Starlink um, uh, satellite connection. Good. So that's, that's a lot of the, the why we could go into market at the end of 2025, beginning of 2026. Okay. Not, we're not many, many years away from being in production. And what's the permitting process? Um, obviously, you've got the pilot plant. Are you already permitted to have the full production facility? That... No, that will come in time. There's a be okay. some announcements in the government now. We have all the the, the writing of those permitting. So far, we have the, the, the permitting for, for exploration, 
we, we, our license have been moved from exploration to exploitation. That means they're in, they go endlessly as long as we pay the yearly patents. We've doing the baseline studies on the environment. We've been allowed environmentally to drill. Like I said, working with the communities, uh, all that will come into play as we approach uh, we approach the production. Okay. And what's the timeline? So, uh, do you, what do you need to submit? How long does it usually take for those permits to come through? Do you think it takes around six to nine months? Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see if the new constitution, who's going to be around the end of the year, changes that. Uh, in the sense that uh, right now, because of the, we thought I don't know, 30 years ago that we produce nuclear energy out of out of lithium. That's why it becomes a strategic material and so on in our constitution, current one. And uh, But again, we have a very good positive uh, um, uh, attitude from the government. Uh, some of our projects have been featured in international uh, shows like this. And uh, we are waiting for, for some, some announcement that will happen soon that we think will speed up that. Um, in September, the government, through, a, through an organization called Invest Chile and the president itself, went to many countries along with the Treasury Ministry on uh, in, in inviting investors in general to Chile. And now the the Treasury Ministry, along with the Economy Ministry, Corfo, who, who rents Talar de Takama to SQM and Alvin Marley, and along with the Invest Chile, have proposed something to the president. He'll in turn uh, tell the country in a, just uh, in March. That's what they've been saying. Good. Okay. And I just I just want to, I know we've, we've thrown loads of dates of yes. what, what's going on, and it's been a bit general, but I just wanted to summarize here what, what the next 12, 24 months look like. What milestones you're expected to achieve? Because there's there's a yeah. PFS coming. There's there's loads to come. Yeah, initial drilling results will come from Francisco Basin and Laguna Verde. We'll also tell the market that we started drilling in Yamara, and that will come after these two projects. The scoping study of Francisco Basin, giving another preliminary economic assessment of, of that project, will come into place. Good. Uh, we'll announce if we go into any new markets, and we'll do a lot of PR. We'll, we'll be uh, producing these initial quantities of battery-grade lithium for the small lab-scale pilot plant, then the construction and build of, of, the, of, the, of the larger one, and then the, 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 niche, the, the stages that will go with the PFS, with first with the Laguna Verde, and then we'll start with Francisco Basin. Both projects are some three to six to nine months uh, difference in the, in, the, in the terms of advancement. So all those things, will be a catalyst for the for the stock and, and we hope the market will take it like that. Well I think it is because obviously like you're saying you're around hundred million US at the moment. Your MPV is is quite outstanding. Seems like you're seems there, like there's you're, a space to grow. <laughs> yeah and, and, and this is it this is still there's a lot more exploration that can be done. There's a lot more resources to be grown out here. Yeah. So it is exciting. all all being well you you get your permit in when you want to get your permit in you you, you sort of progress with financing etc. When when could this when could we see full scale production? Again, 2025, 2026. Yeah, that's 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 what we're aiming. And started with Laguna Verde, and again with the 100 million coming out of equity, 300 million out of debt, and that will in turn finance the development of Francisco Basin. And hope if we are developing Yamara, they will help, will go and help Yamara, the, the new project up north from where we are. Brilliant, Aro. Thank you for your time. Yeah, a lot of good questions. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers.